Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now, take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests and today is a fellow podcaster, Danny. His podcast is Health Hat. Welcome, Danny. Introduce yourself and welcome. Okay. Well, I'm a two-legged cisgender old white man of privilege who is known as Health Hats. And I'm known as Health Hats because I'm a person with multiple sclerosis. I have been care partner to three family members end of life. I'm a nurse. I have led several electronic health record implementations, and I've been in the C-suite of healthcare, and I wear a lot of hats, so health hats. I'm a patient caregiver activist. That's my business, my work. Let's unpack that a little bit. Sure. On the LinkedIn, it says patient caregiver activist podcaster. How does a typical day for you look like? I live with my wife and our dog. We've known each other in a month for 50 years and have been married 47. I would start with the most important. And then I would say I'm an OPA and I have two grandchildren in 11. And we actually have many interests in common, music and podcasting and video production. I'm a musician. I play a baritone saxophone in a Latin band. And I am a podcaster and I spend, I would say I spend five or six days a week working on the podcast. I try to do at least a half an hour, if not an hour a day. I play music every day. I get some exercise every day. Then I'm on the board of governors of an organization called PCORI, the Patient Centered Outcomes Research Institute. That's an organization that's funded by Congress to the tune of about a billion and a half dollars over 10 years. This is the second 10-year cycle. And we we fund patient-related research. So I'm on the board of governors as a patient caregiver stakeholder representative. That takes a bit of my time. And then whatever. It seems like you have more than 24 hours in your day when I'm listening to you. And you seem to be, whenever I meet you on the, our virtual meetings, you seem to be a happy person. Let's talk about your venture with the Camino yeah. to Santiago. I mean, I'm interested in that. My mom has done it with a group. They started in Switzerland each year. They spent one week, so it took them 20 years to get to Santiago. But tell us about your experience. You did it twice. I've done, Yeah, we've done it twice. So my wife is a hiker, and she has a group of friends that she goes on hikes, like the Grand Canyon. That's her kind of a hike. And I never go because I'm a two-forearm crutch and wheelchair guy. And when they were going to go to Spain, I was you're not. I'm going the first time in 2019. But we arranged that one where mostly I would take a taxi from town to town and would meet up with them and maybe go back up the trail as far as I could. But mostly I just went from town to town in a taxi and with the luggage and stuff. But the second time we went, which was this year, April, May, we went for a little over two weeks and we went the Portugal coastline, then then west to Santiago de Compostela. And that was about 200 miles in total. And the hikers did about 170. And I did 70 in my chair. 
And that was really fun. Really fun. I mean, I got a lot of help. We were six 70 year olds and the two of the women did a lot of helping me. It was less than accessible, either pushing my chair or carrying my chair or whatever. But it was, it was very fun. It was very fun. And how do you prepare for such a tour? Well, interesting because, well, the first time we went was I was, I had just had my chair a short time. We took a trip to York City as a old city with cobblestone just to mm -hmm. see what that was like. Then we took the train down to New York City and then took a bus back to get the train bus. And then I took a solo trip to Philadelphia for a meeting and to do by myself. And then in for the second one, I wanted to more recording. I figured out how to, you know, hook up. My wife's an occupational therapist, so she figured out how to attach my selfie stick to the wheelchair so I could record. And I, again, for me, it was increasing the length of time I could tolerate. I don't tolerate sitting really long, you know, trying to figure out how to go with having my crutches attached to the wheelchair so I could either sometimes push the wheelchair, sometimes somebody else pushes the wheelchair and I use my forearm crutches, you know, so just trying being in the wind, being in the cold, being in the rain, you know, and trying to figure out, you know, so that was my training. How was it with that selfie stick? Tell us more about that. Well, it was great. I mean, actually, the best is if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see a two-minute clip where I'm, I'm going down this path. And I'm sort of full of shit, it's just saying about how easy this is and whatever. And all of a sudden, you see the sky. And then my wife, you know, face looking down on me because I fell over backwards. But otherwise, I tried to keep it to two, one, two, three minute clips, you know, because otherwise it got too long. And I did, you know, a couple of episodes about accessibility. You know, there were, you know, different accessibility challenges. Now I've got all this recording I could still do more with, but, you know, now I'm on to something else. It was great. I mean, the first time we went, I, you know, it's a pilgrimage and I'm not a particularly religious person. I'm certainly not Catholic. I decided that it was a pilgrimage of sound. When I went, I did a lot. I didn't do much videoing, but I did recording you know and i brought my you know zoom h6 and and so you know those episodes were recorded whereas the second one was video and sound and you know because then it was fun yeah you know, i just it was like very exciting that i could do it lots of stories can come from that the most exciting story was the day we arrived and went to the hotel and i opened my suitcase and my charging cord was not in my suitcase I was, oh my goodness, I'm going to be on a, you know, two week trip with a dead wheelchair. You know, I was trying to just after being like, you know, really disgusted, you know, just trying to figure out, okay, what, what am I going to do? You know, take a taxi to the beach, spend the day on the beach, take a taxi to the next town, carting this dead wheelchair. And we ended up calling all, it was in Portugal, we called hardware stores and wheelchair sales, wheelchair repairs, you know, trying to find the cord I needed and we couldn't find it. That evening, about 7.30, there was a, we got a call from the front desk that there were somebody to see us and we didn't know anybody in Portugal. So our friend Linda had talked to this company, this woman at the company who sold wheelchairs who felt bad that, you know, my vacation was going to be messed up. She called 20 of her customers and found somebody with the cable I needed, drove to their house and picked it up and drove it to our hotel and loaned it to us for two weeks. I had a charging cable. What a wonderful story. It was great. It was an angel. Sometimes yeah. the universe is helping us in yes. different ways.
Yeah, I think that, you know, we did so many different, you know, there were some places where along the beach where it was boardwalk. Well, that was pretty easy to do with a chair. Some places were paths with you know dirt paths with roots. And so there's a lot of, there's always a decision to make how to take the next few feet. And, you know, there's some of the people we were with, you know, it just sort of freaked them out. I'm in this wheelchair and this is so dangerous and whatever. And then, you know, somebody is very protective. Then there was my wife and, and our friend Kate, who mostly, okay, let's figure this out. You know, we came to one place where it was a road and we were like just going down a regular street, but a tree had fallen across the street. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, the way to go around was a uh, railroad tracks. We folded up the chair and, you know, they carried it across the, you know, onto the railroad berm. And I, with my crutches, could walk past the tree and then carry it over and then get back in it. Then there were times where it was really steep. Mm-hmm. And I did figure out how to sort of zigzag down. But then sometimes it was just too steep and I would go with my crutches and one of them would do the chair. It was, and I could get about, I could do about 10 miles on a charge, but I couldn't really tolerate 10 miles. How many hours per day did you average? In the chair? Well, I average, well, the whole thing is of the 200 mile trip. Mm-hmm. My friends walked 170 miles and I did 70 miles in the chair. Mm-hmm. So that was over like 14 days. Mm-hmm. I probably averaged five miles a day in the chair. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful. I mean, it was just beautiful. It's a great way. You know, one thing about being in a chair is your what you see is really different. For one, I see a lot of behinds, you know, and I see shoes and boots and kids, and people sitting on doorsteps. The ladies weren't so thrilled that I recorded their behinds a lot, but they got over it. This is your view. I actually learned to point the camera off to the side. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. And how do you use this now? Obviously, you have a lot of footage does that go into your podcast, The Health Hats? Or I did do a couple of, I did do a few episodes. I did some episodes of training and I did some episodes about accessibility. And, you know, it's all sitting there. I'm on to something else. You know, now I'm working on a series about emerging adults with mental illness. I have all this footage and maybe someday I'll go back to it. I don't know. It's waiting for you. So we look into 2023. What will you be focusing on then? Well, right now I'm focusing on this emerging adults with mental illness. And I'm starting with people with lived experience. This week, this past Sunday was my first episode, just introducing it. Then I have a couple people who are in their mid-20s who have had have mental illness and, and a parent and a teacher and community health workers, you know, clinicians and policymakers and researchers. I've got about, no, I'm thinking about 10 interviews in the can, but it seems it's it's a pretty broad and deep subject. I think I'll stick with it for a while. I think that's a very needed topic and it goes under health hacks. I do have, I mean, it's a great thing about health cats. I can do anything. I can do anything I want. Sometimes I do it about music. Well, you have different hats that you can wear. I do. I did one of like, actually my, my most voted video is I did an episode on playing the baritone saxophone with disabilities. Mm -hmm. That one got a lot of. We need to raise the awareness of everybody that's yeah, a lot of like- stigma. I mean, I'm lucky because I just, you know, I just wear everything on my sleeve. And it for me, it's 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 material. Lots of stories. All right. Give us some wise advice for 2023 okay. with all your experiences that you have. Okay. What do I think is important? I spend time with people you love 
and people who build you up and you can build up. Pay attention to what you what you have fun doing and do it. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> I think these are very wise advice. So we want to follow Danny Health Hacks with more adventures in the new year. But thank, thank you, you so much for wonderful, inspiring conversation and to many more hacks in 2023. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. It's very nice. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the insights and the good wishes for 2023. We'll follow in your footsteps. Take it from the Iron Woman has episodes every Monday. Don't miss out. We have really cool people with special stories that you can learn from. Follow them. Come to the next story. Take it from the Iron Woman is also a book. Download it or buy it in your local bookstore. It's about global business coaching with sports parallels. Until next time, thank you so much for your support and see you then.